Now there's a dark side to acute treatments, believe it or not. It sounds fine and dandy. Uh, and what's that dark side? It's when you take too many of them. And we call this medication overuse headache. And I would say 90 to 95% of patients that I see in my clinic are not familiar with this. Um, and what is it? It's basically someone that takes too frequently these acute treatments for their migraine. And so any rescue treatment can theoretically cause medication overuse, a headache. What does that mean? That means that you take too many of these rescue treatments and as a result, you actually develop rebound headaches. So you go from having headaches maybe every now and then, and maybe you had a bad few weeks so you took more medication. And as a result, what happens? You develop more headaches. So then to treat more headaches, what do you do? You take more rescue treatments or acute treatments, and then you can see what happens. You go from having an infrequent pattern of headache to a daily pattern of headache. Sometimes we see this actually when patients have had surgeries. So let's say someone has migraine maybe once a week or so, and they have their prescription strength of ibuprofen that they use for their migraine. Uh, and then they undergo knee surgery, and the doctor said for three months you need to take ibuprofen twice a day. Now, the brain doesn't know why you're taking this medicine, but the fact that you have migraines, now you're taking these medicines on a daily basis, and then you'll wonder three months later, why have my headaches gotten so much worse? So we call this medication overuse headache. Now, every medicine medication class, uh, there's a different risk for developing it. For some of them, uh, you can only use it maybe once a week or twice a week before you develop rebound headache. For some of them, you have a little bit of leeway. So NSAIDs, these are ibuprofen, you could say Aleve. Um, what do you think are the number of days in a month you could use relatively safely without developing rebound headaches? Take a guess. I've, I've been told every, you have to, every other day, you can't, don't take them every day. Every other day. So in that case, basically less than 15 days a month or so? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's, that's what I was told by yeah. That's accurate. We, we generally make a recommendation of no more than three days a week because it's hard to keep tabs over the course of a month. Uh, I don't know, do you say two or three? What do you do? Yeah, I usually say three, but you know, with the, depending on the patients, I mean, some people can handle not more than two and then you're, you're stuck. Okay, so combination analgesics. These are combination medications that have maybe aspirin, Tylenol, caffeine, such as Excedrin. How many days a month do you think you could take this um, relatively safely without developing rebound headaches? The same? Mm, okay. Eight. Any other numbers, guesses? Don't be shy. There's a little bit of um, difference of opinion on this, but for the most part, we say about 10 days a month. So that is right now bordering between two and three days a month when you begin to take these combination elements. Meaning, if you take it more than 10 days a month, there's a chance that you're going to develop medication overuse headache or rebound headaches. Okay, what about triptans? That's the class of medicines that we said are relatively first line. Give me a number. You could take it every day? Is that what you said? Okay. Okay, because it's prescribed. Okay. Twice a week. Yes. Every day. Okay. Any other guesses? So the number is actually similar to combination analgesics. We say 10 days a month or less. So that's why we usually tell our patients not more than two days per month, or sorry, two days per week or more, because some months are slightly longer, right, than four weeks. So we say no more than two days a week because you could develop rebound headache if you take it three or four or five days. Some patients, there are a select few that end up, that need to take trip chance on a daily basis. Those are few and far in between. It really is something that should be discussed with a headache specialist before that's initiated. But I would not do that without seeking expert consultation. Um, because partly because of risks involved, uh, meaning triptans are not completely benign medications, but also because of the risk of developing rebound headaches. So triptans 10 days a month. Now, somebody had brought up the point about, well, this is a prescription, and prescriptions you can take, right? Rescue treatments, whether they're prescription or whether they're over the counter, put you at risk for rebound headache, okay? Opioids. <coughs> so Vicodins, Norcos, Percocets, Darvocets, Dilaudids, Morphines, Fentanyls. I'm sorry? You know, the nice thing about us, you know, there's, a, there's obviously a, you know, this is all in the news now, and um, it's, it's nice because there's really uh, little to no role for this in headaches. Um, and of the medications that can cause rebound headache, this is one of the most notorious to do so. I wrote five to 10 days a month. I've seen it with patients that have taken it once or twice a week. So we don't actually prescribe this at all because this is, 
I'm not saying this is a treatment that you should use. I'm just saying if you were to use this for some other reason, knee pain, back pain, whatever pain, you could get rebound headaches by taking it more than five, you know, depending on the studies, 10 days a month. And the last group, barbiturates. These are medicines that are not really used as much now. Uh, it's prescription medicine. Uh, Fioracet, Fiorinol, have you heard of these? So um, these were used a lot in the 80s and in the 90s, and I would say even in maybe 10 years ago. I mean, people were taking this very frequently. Any guesses? Four, okay, four days a month, once a week, okay. So that's about right, once a week or so. So if somebody were to, were to stay on it, we would not recommend they, they try it more than once a week. We don't prescribe this generally, except in extreme cases. Um, Sometimes in pregnant women, it's really the only option. But uh, So I wrote this down, but this is also notorious for causing rebound headache. So that's the reason that we don't prescribe it. Uh, so the last two, we generally don't, we try to avoid as much as possible. But if somebody were to be on it, you could expect to get rebound headaches by using it five to 10 days a month or more. Okay, so what are some general principles of acute treatment, right? So acute treatment is that when the headache starts, what am I gonna do? It's not something that you take when you don't have a migraine. So number one, Treat it early in the attack, the minute the migraine starts, and you know that the migraine has started, meaning the pain has begun, you treat it. Now, some people have the question of, should I treat when I have my aura or wait till the headache? And that was debated before, but I think now the, the evidence and the research seems to show that when the pain starts, you start the treatment right away. Um, you hit it hard up front. So some people say, I'm gonna take a half of my pill today, right now, and if it doesn't get better, I'll wait another three, four hours and then take another one. But that's not the way migraines are. They come on and they come on relatively quickly and they're aggressive. So you have to throw everything you can up at them in a safe manner, of course, up front. So you wanna hit it hard up front. You wanna use the correct dose and the correct formulation. So generally speaking, we try to use the highest dose that's safe for a patient for their acute treatment. Um, and formulation, because there's different ways. If somebody has severe nausea and vomiting with their migraine, then we're probably not gonna give you a pill. And you probably shouldn't be taking a pill. You should try something that's through the nose, something that's an injection, maybe something even rectally for that matter. Um, use for a maximum of two to three days per week. So we just talked about medication overuse headache. Okay, now some people say, well, what if the treatment doesn't work, right? I've tried it four or five times and it just hasn't worked. Or what if it becomes ineffective? It's no longer working. It worked for me three months ago, but for some reason it's not working for me anymore. Well then, you should speak with your physician and find out, is there a different way that I should be taking it? Am I not taking it at the right time, which is as soon as the headache starts? Um, is it that I am not able to keep the pills down and I vomit them and they're not getting absorbed in my stomach. Well, then maybe I need to use something that can disintegrate on my tongue, something I can take through my nose, etc. cetera. Uh, change the drug. Like I told you, there are dozens of acute treatments for migraine, dozens that we use. So it's possible that you just need to switch from one to a different one in consultation with your doctor. Combine with other treatments. I said hit it or hurt up front. We often pair up medications. For instance, we sometimes will add on an NSAID like ibuprofen or naproxen to a triptan because again, we're trying to hit it hard up front. We're not trying to take a triptan, wait three, four hours and then see now should I take an ibuprofen or vice versa, no. Hit it hard up front. The chances of you killing that migraine are much more likely. Uh, sometimes we'll add an anti-nausea medication. So. Uh, depending on each in a patient situation. Now, some people, the medicine works, but it doesn't work that well, but then they put an ice pack on their head or they tie their head up in like a towel or they take a hot shower and then it works well. Um, so, you, uh, so, so pair it up with other treatments as well. So we've talked about acute treatment. Um, there's preventive treatments. Now these are treatments that are more or less used on a daily basis. Now people ask, well, why do I need preventive treatment for my headaches? Or what are who are patients that would benefit from preventive treatment? Um, number one, if the headaches are frequent. Now there's no real cutoff per se. Uh, we like to say if someone has migraines more than once or twice a week, then they were probably a good candidate for daily preventive treatment. Or if they have more than 10 headache days per month, but this can vary. For some people it's eight days a month, some people it's 20 days a month. Um, or if the migraines are disabling. So I have patients who maybe have a migraine once a month, but that migraine is so disabling, it lasts for three days, they can't go to work, they can't enjoy time with their family, they have to miss their kids' uh, sporting uh, events. And so they say, you know what, I wanna take something on a daily basis just to try to avoid that one a month that I have. You following? So it depends on the person. Either they're too frequent or they're just bad when they come on that tells you that, you know what, I would probably benefit from preventive treatment. Now, how do you choose preventive treatments? Because just like the acute treatments, there are plenty of preventive treatments, dozens 
that we use. And it, it's expanding. The list is growing. Um, there's different options. There's certainly medications, which we're going to talk about. There are what we call nutraceuticals, which are vitamins and supplements that people might choose to be on. There are now devices in the last couple of years that have been FDA approved for the preventive treatment of migraine. And for some people, it's lifestyle changes. So take your pick. There's medications that we use for prevention. Initially, at least, at least until the last couple of years, medications were taken from other specialties, meaning we found, so what would happen is that um, somebody wanted to be on a daily medicine, but there was nothing available for migraine prevention. Uh, but then they also had high blood pressure, so then they started taking their high blood pressure pill and they noticed the headaches got better. So then someone decided one day that, you know what, why don't we study this in patients that have migraine and see if it actually helps them. So they did this for seizure medications. Somebody had epilepsy, seizures, and they also have migraines. And then they were taking the seizure medications and the migraines got better. So uh, as a result, someone decided one day to study the seizure medication and what effect it has on migraines. As a result, we have a lot of medicines. Most of them are from other areas. Most commonly, anti-seizure medications that are effective for migraine prevention, anti-blood pressure medications that are effective for migraine, um, antidepressants or anxiolytics that treat both depression and anxiety. Um, obviously, uh, Botox, which I'm sure many of you are aware of. Um, so this uh, was borrowed from cosmetic purposes. I mean, initially it was done for cosmetic reasons and patients that were doing it for cosmetic reasons noticed that, you know what, my migraines are also getting better. So someone decided, let's go ahead and study it. This is the one treatment, CGRP antibodies, that's new that is actually migraine specific. Uh, what are some commonly used preventive medications? These are just names I'm throwing out there so that names that you may have heard of. Anti-seizure, there's Topamax and Depakote. There's blood pressure medications, propranolol, metoprolol. Not all blood pressure medications, not all seizure medications, but certain specific ones. And then certain antidepressants, not all of them. So Elevils, Effexors, and Cymbaltas, these tend to work. SSRIs, which are the most common antidepressants that are prescribed, so Zoloft or Celexa or Lexapro or Prozac, doesn't seem to work for migraine. But, so that's why I'm saying there's certain medications from within each class, and you should speak with your doctor about this. Botox injections uh, have now been used. The FDA approved them for the treatment of chronic migraine, which is frequent migraine. It's a series of injections, 31 sites uh, to be exact. And they're done every three months, and it's, a quite, it's, a, it's quite an effective treatment. Um, now, uh, I wrote must have tried oral preventive service, not because um, the only reason really for that is because insurance companies usually want to prove it unless you've tried oral preventive medication. You should have tried and not responded to a few of them. And that can be a pain for some patients because oral medications tend to have more side effects. Botox has virtually no side effects, especially soon after the procedure. But that's just the rules that we're playing by right now, so we usually have to try oral preventive medications. In May 2018, you may have heard the news or you may have read online, somebody might have messaged you because they know you suffer from headaches, um, and they said, why don't you try this out and stop complaining, um, are CGRP antibodies. Um, so the first uh, approval was given about two months ago for this uh, medicine. Um, now, there's one currently available, came out two months ago. There's three that are hopefully gonna be available soon. Um, and this targets a new specific receptor in the brain that has been studied over the last, you can say, 15 years uh, that we know is directly involved in migraine pain. So it doesn't affect any other type of pain except migraine pain. And this is the first drug that specifically targets that receptor. So uh, the drug is called Amovig. Irenumab is the generic name. It's not FDA approved. It's a once a month injection into different parts of your body. Um, you take your pick, and it's uh, indicated for patients that have episodic and, and chronic migraine. Uh, so you'll hear more about this as it comes out. This is the first one, but there's three that are, should be coming out as well in the near future. Now, some people say that, you know what, I just don't want to be on medications. Is there anything else I can do? I have very frequent headaches. Is there an alternative because I just don't want to deal with side effects and I don't want to develop kidney problems and liver problems? Is there something else I can do? There are other options. Number one, there's supplements that have worked. And when I say work, I mean not, you know, Joe Schmo tried it out in his backyard and sold it to people on the street and said, look, you know, try magnesium, it's a great supplement. This is stuff that's been studied in clinical trials where they gave patients a real supplement and a fake supplement, they didn't know what they got, and they compared the two groups. And these are supplements that are effective if taken on a daily basis to help you control the frequency of your migraines. Not acute treatment, frequency of migraines, so prevention. Now there are devices that are now available. The, the, the device that's most commonly prescribed, I would say, or used 
is this device called Cephaly. It stimulates the nerves above your forehead, and it's a once a day treatment that is used for migraine prevention. So if somebody's gonna use medications, they'll say, well, there's this device that's available, and it works just like a migraine preventive medication. It's once a day, you wear it before going to sleep for a half an hour. It's so safe that we can even use it in pregnant women. Uh, there's other devices. Some people have exquisite sensitivity to light, and that's a trigger for migraines. So there, there are these lenses that have been studied, again, in research, evidence-based research, that these lenses actually block the blue-green wavelength that triggers migraines. So some people that have migraines that are triggered with certain wavelengths of light, computer screens, this is, this is a way to try to prevent that from happening. Uh, this is actually an acute treatment, but I put it here. It's a device that you wear on, uh, on you hold it up here, and it goes, gives you the shock. It's more of a loud noise, and it's a magnetic stimulator that in the middle of a migraine attack can help you stop it. It's very expensive. Um, and then um, more recently, there's a vagal nerve stimulator that's been approved also for migraine. So you basically hold it up to your neck, you treat for about 5-10 minutes, and then the migraine aborts itself. Um, so we've talked about acute treatments, preventive treatments, and then there's rescue treatments, and I'll conclude with this. Rescue treatments are, you know, you've tried the acute treatment, you're on the preventive treatments, but you're still having a very prolonged migraine. It's now day 4, day 5, day 6 and you don't know what to do about it, we have a rescue plan for you. What are rescue treatments? You know, it's that migraine that just won't go away. Just, it, it's, 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 whatever I do, it's not, nothing's working. Sometimes we'll use oral medications, so we may give a burst of something that would, we would otherwise not give on a daily basis, but we may give it to you for the purpose of trying to rescue you. That could include steroids, muscle relaxants. Um, Patients often end up going to the ER and they'll give you this quote cocktail of medications. And the co it's called a cocktail because it's really this combination of different medications that are given simultaneously. The effect of that is an aborted migraine. Um, so there's fluid steroids, uh, Ketorolac, Benadryl, Depakote, nausea medications that are given simultaneously. Magnesium as well tends to abort a migraine. Um, these can be given, uh, these are generally given in the ER. Most migraineurs hate going to the ER though because it's loud. Uh, it's very expensive, and they have high co-pays. Um, it's just not a convenient place to be. So we're trying to move away from this model of you have a bad headache, let's go to the ER, and instead shift it toward either inpatient treatment in the hospital, or even better yet, do them in outpatient infusion centers. And Henry Ford, we're going to be having opening one of these uh, very soon for our migraine patients. But basically what you would get in the ER, instead of going to the ER and waiting for two hours, you would schedule and call in same day or next day, come in and get your cocktail of treatments. Um, usually it's, uh, the, the strongest form of IV medication that we have for migraine, and this is the, the, the best, most effective treatment we have is something called DHE or dihydroergotamine. Really only neurologists will use this because there's a certain way to administer it. We have to be very careful about who we give it to because of side effects, but it's probably the strongest medicine and it can be given in the hospital or in an infusion suite. Now, if you go back to this cocktail, you look at these medications here, you'll notice that one group of medications isn't on here, but yet is often given in the ER. Anyone want to take a stab? The pain meds, opioids, dilated morphine, it has no role. It's been studied in research, and all it does is it increases your chances of getting rebound headache. Even one treatment with opioids, IV in an ER, can, uh, can prolong your migraines in the long run. So it, it, has, it plays no role. Uh, in, now there's procedures that we do, nerve blocks. Some, some of you may have had these done. These are to rescue you from a bad migraine with a needle in different sites along the sides of your head. Um, there's also a needle-free method. It's called an SPG block. It's a catheter that doesn't have a needle, and it's very safe, simple. It can be used in pregnant women. You target a ganglion behind the nose to try to rescue you from an intractable migraine. Um, some people will ask, well, what if my medications are just not working, right? I've tried procedures, treatments, and I'm still having very frequent migraines. I'm going to conclude with this. Recognize that migraines are a multi-front war. It's not just about medications. There's a lot more to it than that. You can think about it like this. You have migraines at the center. What makes them worse? Stress, mood disorders, so uncontrolled depression, uncontrolled anxiety, a sedentary lifestyle where you're not very active, uh, overweight, being obese, uh, poor hydration, and um, that definition changes, but for the most part, we tend not to drink enough fluid, uh, skipped meals, poor sleep. Now, all of these collectively attack you, and the result is what? Um, your headaches don't get better despite being on treatment. And if someone doesn't approach this from a multidisciplinary approach, it's like fighting, fighting a war on multiple fronts. You have to target each particular angle. So I usually talk about weight management with my patients because it's directly related. We talk about regular exercise as being very important for frequent migraines. And we talk about relaxation techniques, counseling, and eventually professional help, be it through a psychiatrist or psychologist, someone that suffers from frequent migraines that are triggered by stress and things uh, of that sort. 
Um, some people will ask, what about medical marijuana? Does that work? We don't know. Uh, there's no studies to date that have studied this in migraine, so when someone comes up to us and asks us, we usually will tell them that as of now, we don't know uh, if it works or not. Acupuncture, this was studied in a Cochrane database review a couple of years ago. This is a, a very hot topic. Some feel that it does work, but it works only because of placebo effects, and some say it doesn't work at all. If somebody wants to try it, we don't have a problem with them trying it and seeing if it works. Dave piercings, right? Piercings over here in the ear. Um, again, no studies that have shown it works or not. Uh, I don't know, you can share your experience. My experience is that it doesn't work. I've had patients that do it. It might work for two or three weeks. They come back and say, oh my gosh, what a terrible idea. And there's a risk of infections and things like that. And then uh, essential oils, same. We don't have enough studies. This is something that I would say if you wanted to try, you could try. 